Lakeland PBS presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. Production funding of Common Ground is made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, member FDIC. Welcome to Common Ground. I'm producer director, Scott Knudsen. In this episode, Jesse Dermody of Brothers Burn Mountain takes us to the studio, but not for music, instead to show us his process of sculpture. Hi there, I'm Jesse Dermody, and this is my sculpture exhibition entitled Strange Forms. It's at the McRosty Art Center in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. The pieces are composed of driftwood, skulls, bones, any found items that I might pick up as I go on my daily hikes. So this piece is entitled Jesse, and it is my namesake. It is my first attempt to do a self-portrait or a self-portrait of sorts. And uh, it has been inspired by grief and joy through grief. I'm a Scorpio, so this coming up right here is a representation of my joyful, griefy scorpion's tale. It has a lot of secrets that it's willing to admit that it has, uh, but it's um, probably not going to tell you exactly what they are. These are folded wings that have the ability to take flight um, when needed, but uh, generally don't. And it also has a backside. Um, the backside um, has a lot of uh, materials that I've found of uh, um, again, found through grief. Yeah. I am a, a poet, a musician, and a sculptor, and we're focusing on, on the sculptures right now. And it's uh, completely my idea of sculpture, my rendition of sculpture. I'm um, unschooled, except um, how I've taught myself. I, I work in the medium of found items, found ideas, found words, but not just any found item. It has to really stop me in my tracks as I'm walking along and, and uh, make me stoop down to look closer. And uh, if upon investigation, I, I find it, it has a, a delicate and exquisite form, I will pick it up and put it in my bag and carry it home with me. <laughs> the barn is my studio where I keep my hordes of treasures protected where I, where I sculpt. Um, and it's in rural Akeley, out in the country, spacious. Yeah, this is you know, the past week, week and a half, I've uh, been uh, slowly tinkering with this idea here. We'll see, you know, it might become something. I have an idea for a, a background for it too. I can show a little more of that later on. You know, but it's not going to look like that when it's done because this is just an, an infant idea right now. Yeah, it might be cool to, I mean, I, 
I have no real agenda exactly, but it might be cool to look at a few infancy pieces and then a couple or a few um, pieces that are a little further along. You can see how each of them progresses. The, the space uh, gives my mind room to, uh, to levitate. It's great because if I ever come to any problem spots or things that frustrate me, literally all I have to do is walk out the barn door, walk for a few minutes and come back refreshed. It's great. And to have those prairie views uh, is uh, just the soothing an artist needs. Yeah, so this is my, my interim room uh, where pieces that I, I feel are, might be on the cusp of completedness. Uh, I like to stick them in here, stick them on the wall. Um, that one is complete. Uh, it's called Joseph. Um, I didn't know what to call it, basically, but it's, it's after my, uh, my, my grandfather, whose name was Joseph Joseph. And um, to me, it has a lot of uh, grandfather wisdom energy. Um, and it's good to have it around. Um, I completed it probably two and a half, three years ago. And it's good to have in this room with other uh, lesser completed items because it helps me figure it out for some reason. The piece started, see these pieces, this oak, it was an oak quarter barrel, old as sin. And it was just sitting in the barn here. It had fallen apart and it was just sitting in a pile full of cobwebs and, and dust and pigeon turds. And uh, one day I, I was walking past it, kind of slowly meandering, not knowing how I could do any work that day. And I, uh, I just threw in my peripheral, I went <clears throat> like that. And I said, well, you know, and I stooped down and I, all these pieces, I thought, wow, these actually, if I worked on them, they could become beautiful. And I, it took me about, you know, 15, 20 minutes to figure out this formation. And uh, the next part of the formation was to use the rings, one inside the other. And then this was the only surviving part of the bottom of the, the quarter barrel. And uh, so it was um, several um, onrushes of uh, inspiration. And uh, this whole piece was probably all done in my peripheral vision for some reason. Usually ones that I like are, I, if I look at something head on, I, it's no go. I have to kind of, as I'm walking past, not thinking about it, um, the idea has to occur to me. Originally, these were on here. Uh, I think they went somewhere in here. They uh, came right out of there, like that, and um, I tried them that way for a while, and it did, did not, it felt very conventional. Uh, <laughs> I saw how I could take them off, and I can't explain why, but they, they feel much better here than the way they were originally meant in God's country to come out of the skull. <laughs> I wish I, I could explain why, but I don't explain it to myself why. When I'm working, I just I try things out on, on, until it uh, appeals to my eye. Even if it were to be con more conventional looking, if it appealed to my eye, fine. I don't I don't care. Whatever works. I think it was uh, white at one point, and then uh, somebody painted it that uh, very light brown. Yeah, I I had the the thought that whoever painted this thing didn't realize how beautiful of a job they were doing. It's almost um, <laughs> uh, something that uh, some painters I've seen who, are, who I love would do on purpose, but it was just unconscious. You know, probably somebody just wanted to get it over and done with and didn't realize how beautiful the, the sloppiness of it. Those are abandoned pigeon eggs. Um, I wouldn't take pigeon eggs from a nest that was still in use, um, that, would, <laughs> that wouldn't uh, uh, be good luck for me. <laughs> so those are delicate abandoned pigeon eggs. And uh, they seemed important to go there, and I don't know why. It goes with a, uh, a series that I'm still in the middle of, of doing. This is Joseph. There's another um, 
in another stall called Alice, his wife, my grandma. There's a short series I did for my mom called Kathy. Um, it helps me to personify um, the pieces sometimes. Uh, it gives my, my heart a greater inlet into what I'm doing. So if I, I ever make a sculpture with your name on it, you know you mean a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> this one here, it's a, I'm gifting it to my, my brother and his wife. Um, they're having a, a baby daughter soon. And um, I'm giving this to them for her. And um, I consciously struggled um, to f try and find the divine feminine. So this piece to me is pure struggle. These boards came from their rough cut one by sixes. And uh, my brother and I um, disassembled an uh, old farmhouse built in the late 1800s in Barnum, Minnesota, which is near Moose Lake, um, south of Duluth there. And uh, this one I probably took right near a hornet's nest before I got stung. The hornet's nest was inside of the walls, um, so it has a lot of history. And I, I just I like the way um, it has aged. Um, if I gift someone a piece, um, it means that I, I like it. And it's at first rather, rather painful, like I have a sliver in my hand pretty deep when I give it because I, I like it so much and I have something selfish in me that doesn't want to give it. And then once I've given it, it feels really good. <laughs> like the sliver immediately got taken, taken out of my hand upon exchange. These are all um, a series of knots and uh, I like how they're all connected. They look like mouths of, could be birds singing or, or, or people together talking or singing and that I like the, the lines and then like that. Um, that felt really important to me and this goes up here eventually maybe. Um, and originally uh, it was uh, when, with the, the whole George Floyd um, murder hit me and 10 billion other people really hard um, to, to witness that. And um, this was my peace and reaction, consci conscious reaction to that. And I get the sensation of beings breathing. And here's an ear to top it off. So um, some presence is, is listening to those beings breathe. I would like to introduce you to my good friend, Moki. Um, and uh, we get along um, wonderfully as friends. And uh, to me, he's quite whimsical and uh, and humorous and playful, um, and uh, his name is Moki because his singular eye right here is a Moki ball, which um, are formed in caves. In uh, this one was formed in a cave in New Mexico. Um, it's from mineral deposits dripping from the ceiling. Um, and uh, I, I heard a story that the natives in New Mexico, the indigenous people, um, used to put out these moki balls at, at night on the edge of their village um, so that the, the spirits would have something to play with. <laughs> and they'd have the moki balls to play with at night. And, and then they'd leave the villagers alone as well. They wouldn't play too many tricks on them. It was uh, originally begun as a shaman staff, my brother and I um, were shooting a music video uh, three, or, three years ago or so in the high mountains, the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, and we each wanted to make a shaman stick for the video shoot. The video shoot never turned out as we had wanted it, so we never showed it to anybody, but the shaman stick, which was this part right here, when I came back from Colorado, turned into this four-legged creature, and um, it took me about two weeks to create, and then I, I found this, um, the bottom piece on a, a walk along Lake Superior, 
Um, not going to say where, because it's one of my treasure troves that I go to. Um, and uh, I went, oh, my God, there, there are four holes where knots used to be, where the, the legs would fit perfectly. So I brought it home already knowing what I was going to use it for. And um, it's the, the base for the footfalls of Moki. I sure would like to invite you to, to come with me on a hike. So I'm just going out on one of my several daily hikes, starting off from home base with my grab bag and uh, just enjoying myself and at the same time keeping my eyes peeled for any uh, little treasures I might find. And then uh, whatever catches my eye and makes me stop has a chance of being picked up and put in the bag. <laughs> Over the years I've noticed that when I go on hikes um, there are always little little things that their their light or their darkness catches my eye and I'm always had always been stooping down and picking things up and filling my pockets up and if I had a long sleeve shirt using it to tie around whatever I had found driftwood or a bunch of bones or whatever and uh, I'd become so burdened with not having a bag that I just started carrying bags with me on most of my hikes so that I wouldn't be caught off guard and less comfortable while walking. <laughs> it's like, like with poetry, I don't, I'm not necessarily scouting for words all the time to, to write down. It just, words occur to me suddenly and I, I better have a pen and paper on me when it happens. So I always carry a pocket notebook with pens. This is kind of similar to that. Morning, kind of composing as I go along sometimes, or my unconscious is, and it tells me some things sometimes. If I see any poison ivy, I will tell you, but there isn't too much in here. Here's something. Let's see what this guy is here. Let's see if we got some, that, some like that, eh? Vertebrae. This was a large one. I wonder if it was buck or doe. We will find out in a moment. No, we won't. <laughs> But that is cool. Wow, that was a big one. The top of its skull had uh, eroded away because it was upside down. It's unusual, I've never found one like that before. That is extra cool. And it has a couple of big vertebrae, the upper vertebrae. That's really cool. That can be, I mean, look at that. That's about the biggest, biggest one I've ever found for the, the jaw. Very cool. That's a good find, I would say, right there. Wow, even that is really cool, the shapes on these two things. That's pretty divine, divine architecture right there. Kind of looks um, futuristic, you know, like shapes of futuristic vehicles or something, I don't know. I do like that. I'm gonna stick these in here. And then this baby, be careful with her. Honor her. I could imagine sticking a smaller skull of a different animal right on top of there and having it two in one. 
Huh. Very strange. This is a, a coyote um, hip bone that I, I found about a year ago. And yesterday I found a, a doe skeleton. Um, wasn't expecting to find anything, but I was on a walk in the middle of the woods off trail. And uh, I'll show you the hip bone of the doe. The interesting thing about this is it is shattered and healed. And it was an older doe because the, the teeth and the jaw um, were very worn down, like I've never seen before. It was the oldest deer that I've ever, the skeleton of a deer that I've ever found. And so it probably got hit by a car in the hip, somehow survived through the pain and healed up. And this is the, the rear right upper leg bone. Um, and it, normally they're, they're straight. And this one is hooked at almost a 40, you know, 35 degree angle. That's pretty fascinating to me that, uh, you know, it survived for so long and I've been told that um, the body has a way of even allowing the animal to, to walk and still use that leg even though it's all mangled. It still figures out a way the body heals in such a way that with a limp the, the doe probably could have still walked. For some reason that really, really got my imagination going and very lucky to find it. I've never, never found one like this before. Just slightly broken rib bones that have healed in wild animals and that's it. So my, my, my friend, uh, Nate Lutgers, who's a, a painter, um, one day he said, uh, man, I got all these, uh, these old palettes and paintbrushes and I thought of you, maybe you could make a sculpture out of them someday. And I said, you know, with enthusiasm and skepticism at my own abilities. I said, yeah, man, bring him over. And, and he did, we went on a nice long walk. And then after the walk, he took him out of his truck and gave him to me, let him sit for about a year. And, and here I am finally uh, with hopefully some fruitful ideas of uh, how they can be incorporated into this piece. And there's another palette at the head of the piece that I've already incorporated. My idea was to get it to a point where I can stand it on end. Here, it's disattached, so don't do Oh, okay. Okay. If you want to put your end down. Yeah, there's Okay, no let me get out of there. <laughs> I'm going to become one with the sculpture, Jesse. I'm going to have to rename this Ryan. OK. That's, uh, you know, um, maybe I'll just stick this. Right in the middle. Yeah. Right oh, here. Sure. Once I, uh, Wouldn't that be cool? That would be. Once I repair it, I'll uh, Stick it there. It'll only take me a minute to repair. I've got wood glue and gorilla glue and stuff like that, so heavy. It'll be hard to get off the ground. No wonder it's that heavy. It's got stones on the bottom here. Yeah. Well, and we can just rest it against the wall. Something like that, you know. Maybe like that, without pinging anything. That one's a beaut, Jess. Yeah, that's it a good breathes one. a little better in here. Yeah, it's a very good room. I like it. And then there's just the pieces that are in the van, and that's it, huh? Yep, there's seven more, awesome. and that's it. And the lighting in there, too. Helps. Yeah, because it's 
It's well lit. Yeah. This piece is called Snapper Vision, and it ties in to uh, the barn and uh, our travels together at the barn. Um, this right here is that, that skull that uh, we found in the woods um, not too far from, from where I live, a couple miles. It turns out that I didn't realize it at first because I've never found one of these before, but it's an old skull that, you know, from a hunted deer, and the hunter um, with a, a saw shaved off the top to get the antlers probably. So this board is on, on top of that shaved off portion of, of uh, the deer skull. And uh, it just seemed like uh, it needed a, a fox's skull coming out of the deer skull. And then more different deer antlers coming out of the, the fox's skull. Um, I don't know why. And these are uh, snapper turtle shells that um, I bought from a, an old timer um, not too far from here in the country and moose antlers. Um, I don't know too much about this piece except that I like the circles, um, just the, the form of the circles. And it gives me a, a sense of longevity and, and perpetuity. Thanks for watching. Join us again on Common Ground. If you have an idea for Common Ground in North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call 218-333-3014. To watch Common Ground online, visit lptv.org and click Local Shows. To order episodes or segments of Common Ground, call 218-333-3020. Production funding of Common Ground was made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, member FDIC. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.